doing? I want to meet the world record for the largest amount of breakfast cereal eaten out of a paddling pool. Do you know where the stopwatch is? And you're going to eat all of that, are you? Well, I've eaten a bowl of cereal every day for the last year. That's 365 training bowls. All I've got to do now is eat 365 bowls of cereal in just under an hour. Lil How, that is really dangerous. You don't have to tell me. I've already fallen in twice. Get inside. But I'm hungry. Well, so am I. I think I've eaten about a bowl full. Oh, hang on a tick. Did you... Did you rinse this out before you filled it up? Can't taste the Baruka socks. Oh, I little how and I've come up with another of my big questions. Can I eat a whole paddling pool full of breakfast cereal? You really are running out of ideas, aren't you? Good morning. The Prime Minister has declared a state of emergency in Purley due to a lack of breakfast cereal. I love monkeys, I love monkeys. All those happy little, chirpy little monkeys with their tails and their bananas. I think that if we all were monkeys, we'd have happier manadas. Give me monkeys, lots of monkeys. Boy, you know that it's the monkeys I adore. If my love said that she did not love those monkeys, I wouldn't love her anymore. Thank you very much. And this week, my favourite monkey is the bonobo. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, um, obviously, a bonobo's not as good as you guys. You're the best. Blimey. Touchy monkeys. That is not a big question. That's a flipping stupid question. But we've got to answer it now. I've done my big question klaxon. Those are the rules. Firstly, you have just made that rule up. And secondly, I've answered it already. You can't eat a paddling pool full of cereal because it's stupid, it's dangerous, and you're not allowed. Gordon, grab that computer in there. The one with the wig and the twin set. You can't take them. That's where the International Olympic Adjudicators are going to sit. Oi! Unhand me, you brutes! I warn you, I do online karate! Right, you've asked for this. How's it doing that? It's not even plugged in. What are you doing with my chairs? Never mind the chairs. Look, they're taking mother. Yeah, but the chairs are really useful. They're not your chairs, sir. They belong to the BBC Props Department. Do they? Yeah, yeah, but we're doing a TV show for the BBC. Are we? Yes, you are. And your show's run out of money, so we're taking our stuff back. Y you can't do that! Oh, I think you'll find I can. Look, I'm doing it now. There's no need to be sarcastic. What's going on? They're stripping our assets. You can't do that. This is a children's show. Is it? Gordon, can't you turn that thing off? I've been trying to do that for years. Stripping your assets means taking all your stuff. Well, you're not snatching my klaxon. What's this? It's your redundancy. The show can't afford to pay you. Vanessa, what's going on? Hi. Who's she? This is... She's the producer of Big Howard's Little Howard's Big Question. The what? A what? You ordered together. Who are all these people? I'm afraid it's true, guys. Some money's gone missing from the budget and we've got nothing left. Nothing at all. What budget? Why are all these people in our house? Bud budget. Budget. Uh, the budget is the amount of money they give you to make a TV programme and all of ours has gone. I'm really sorry. What's going on? Little Howard, I've never told you this before, but, but we're on a TV show and... No, we're not. I'd have watched it if we were. We are. We're on CBBC. That's why I always make you watch Agatha Christie repeats on the murder channel between four and six. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I, I didn't want you to start asking awkward questions about, about how you came to be here and, 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 and why. And you always get upset when people say you're not real and... and... Ooh. 
Ooh. They've left our cut glass crystal fizzy pop decanter. I don't know what I'd have done if they'd taken this. Do you remember dear Aunt Mooty gave it to <laughs> Harold, I've come up with a second big question. How did I get here? Oh, blimey. Um, well, when a man and a magic pencil love each other very much... Big Harold, you have to stop talking and go home. Oh, thank goodness for that. Wait a minute, I live here. Yes, but whenever you say something, we have to pay you and we can't afford it. Well, that's just ridiculous. I, I, stop, I, stop I, calling. I, go to your room. What, no, I... Go, what, yes, just, yes, just, yes, I, no, no, no. Bye. Bye-bye. I'm sending you to bed without any lying. What? Oh, you can't do that. I'm just... I'm just, I'm just oh, call someone. I'm, just, I'm writing a letter. I'm writing. Right. Simon! Can you call security, please? Hello, and welcome to Little Howard's Big Question Confidential. This week, the show answers the tricky question, How did I get here? That's really good. I think we'll use that. Why are they filming this? Because to save some money, we've agreed to make another show about how we make your show. So we're actually giving the secrets away. But how can we make our show without Big Howard and Mother? Well, we really can't afford them. I mean, not with all the money going missing. We're just going to have to get by with a skeleton crew, see? <laughs> Are you having a dream sequence? Yes, I have one every week. I'm afraid we can't afford it. That's even more money gone. So now... Uh, Andy, I'm afraid you're fired. Little Howard had a dream sequence. What can you do? It was only a short one. Sorry, Andy. Good luck, Andy. Oh, dear. Isn't there anything we could do about this? Well, you could talk to your agent. What's an agent? An agent is someone who looks after people in show business. Are they called psychiatrists? Not all of them. Your agent's called Roger. Is he nice? Well, I'll give you his phone number. Why are they filming you giving me his phone number? It's reality TV. Duller the better, sweetie. Little Howard, you have to dial nine to get an outside line. Oh, for goodness sake. Why are you filming this? Hello, Roger T. Pigeons, Variety Artists. It's Little Howard here. Are you my agent? Oh, Little Howard, congratulations on the series. It was quite a coup getting you that. And I know about coups. I'm a pigeon, you see. Oh, it's just... All the money's gone missing, and they've sacked Big Howard and confiscated Mother, and we can't do the paddling pool full of breakfast cereal thing. Well, somebody's been wasting it. You've got to have a good look at the budget, find out where the money's going. How do I look at the budget? I haven't even got a key to its cage. Ah, great one, lad. No, it's the budget, not the budgie. There's no budgie. We can't afford it because of the budget. So, there are two budgies. Yeah, stop it now. You can have a look at the budget any time you want because, well, in the contract, I insisted on you being executive producer, which means you're the boss of the whole show. I mean, I only put it in for a joke, but... Hello? Hello? Right. OK, watch this here. Director. What does he do? Excuse me. Can you start coming again, please? Hello. Are you the director of the show? Uh, hi, yeah, I am. Um, you, you've got your finger... Are we you... haven't got time for that. Tell me what a director does to help make a TV show and tell me also how much they pay you, please. OK, well, well, I'll tell you the first part, but first I really do think that you should move your... Please just answer the question. This is very important. I'm trying to get Big Howard his job back. OK. Well, um, as director, when I get the script, I uh, look at them and then I decide how we're going to shoot it. So what shots will tell the story. Right. Then I work with the cameraman to get those shots and kind of help get the look of the show. And I work with the sound man and tell him what kind of stuff we're looking for in a scene. And I work with the performers and I give them notes on how they're acting in a scene. And then when it goes into the edit, I oversee that. Right. <laughs> so you're quite important then. Uh, who writes the script? Oh, that, the, that would be the scriptwriters who write the script. I like your system. Right, 
Where's that big bloke who smells of eggs? Well, this is a fine how do you do. How do you do? Oh. Haven't seen you in the cupboard before. I'm Simon, the killer death robot from space. You may have seen me in such films as War of the Killer Death Robots and Revenge of the Killer Death Robots. Do you get stored here often? Eh? Oh, you cheeky thing. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, um, hello. Uh, sorry, I mustn't let you see the scripts. Uh, it's, they're not finished, uh, yet. Uh, still. Are you one of the script writers? Yes, yes, I am, yes. I'm one of the writers, yes. Yes, I specialise in really kind of, um, you know, snappy dialogue, you know, and fast-paced wisecracks. It's really kind of, you know, quick fire. Right. Did you write the joke about confusing the word budget with the word budgie? Oh, um... Yeah. Then I'm promoting you to head writer! You are the boss of all the writers! Yes. Oh, yes. Awesome. Yes. I'm the boss of you. You. Bye! Mm. I've worked on all sorts of stuff mm. and um, I'm really enjoying this job. Mm. Um, little Howard's fantastic, isn't he? Oh, it? he's just a he's great, great kid. Absolutely amazing. He's just, you know, he's such a nice guy. Right. What's next? Cameraman and Soundman. That sounds like the rubbishest superhero duo in the world. Surely we can sack them. Where are they? I'll sack them now. <clears throat> um, here we are. Hello. Well, the thing is, it's very interesting on this show because, of course, the main person we're filming isn't really there. Who's that, then? Well, it's you. Why aren't I there? Well, uh, because you're a cartoon, so you're not really real, are you? <gasps> Don't ever say that! I am real! Get out! Clean your desk out! You're fried! What? That's what that man off The Apprentice says. You know, Alan Sugarpuff. Huh? He means you're fired. Oh. And you. Oh. Sorry. Oh, no, there's been some sort of mix-up. You see... Our budget went missing. Poor little fella. Pop some birdseed on the windowsill. It'll soon come back. I know, you've misheard. I said budget. It budget. Oh, I'm always mishearing things. A similar thing happened when my robot battalion and I tried to invade Venus for the ninth time. Or was it the tenth? Uh, anyway, a few of them misheard the command and ended up invading Venice. <laughs> what a lovely holiday, though. Would you like to see some photos? Ooh! You really can't sack people like that. What do you do? I'm the series producer, Little Howard. Hmm. What's that, then? Well, that means I organise the whole show, really. Oh, OK. Look, the point is, we really, really need a cameraman and sound recordist. I mean, look, Martin, the researcher, is trying to do both jobs at once, and it's just really not going very well. Are you all right? Excuse me. Excuse me. So you're Martin the Researcher? Yes, I am, yeah. And what do you do for the show? Well, um, I make a lot of the props and uh, I organise the locations, uh, this one for example. It's very nice. Is that cabbage? Did you organise that? Ooh, classy. I also uh, gather the information and facts uh, that we feature in the programme. Right then, name a fact. Uh, the tape's about to run out on your camera. Well, that's wrong for a start. Hello, Roger T. Pigeon Variety Artists. Hello, Roger. Little Howie, have you found the money yet? No, and everyone seems too important to sack. Oh, dear. Have you gone through their bags? No, apparently we can't do that because of something to do with getting invaded by pirates. Do you mean invasion of privacy? Yes, that's what they said. Oh, I don't know. It's political correctness gone mad. What you've got to do is you've got to search the whole corporation from the very top, Phil Mitchell, to the very bottom, Billy Mitchell. All the best. Right. And your name is? Little Howard. Your occupation? Little Howard. 
and your chosen specialist subject. My chosen specialised subject is who stole all the money from our TV programme's budget. Your chosen subject, who stole all the money from our TV programme's budget in two minutes, starting now. Who stole all the money from your TV programme's budget? Oh, um, I don't know. I was hoping you could tell me. Yes, can we switch places? This is quite scary. Could we call security, please? Oh! He seems like such a nice man, are you being served? You'll never catch me, Pumphreys! So where's Big Howard, then? He's been laid off because we can't afford to pay him. Oh, that's awful. Ancho <laughs> says that's terrible. He says he was a bit rubbish, anyway. Yeah, he knows what it's like being dragged down by a tiresome human. <laughs> Wait a minute. A load of money's gone missing from our budget. <gasps> the budgie? No, not the budgie. Mm -hmm. The budget. Budget. Oh, oh phew. Is Big Howard all right? How's he bearing up? Oh, I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> oh. Outro says, oh. Yeah, I, I heard that one. Do you guys know anybody in the BBC who might have broken into our budget's cage and stolen our money? You can't say that. Mm -hmm. What? What did he say? Hello, Mr. Jonathan Ross. Hello, little out. How can I help? Well, a lot of money's gone missing from our programme's budget, and someone said they thought you might have it. Who said that? It was that cactus, wasn't it? Right. Oh, I'm going to with that cactus. I'm going to get him, I am. And the ball. <laughs> yeah, look. It's Jonathan Ross? <gasps> uh, 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 hello. Do you, do you want me to come on your chat show or something? All <laughs> oh, right, that's for you. Oh, uh, 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 I lost. Oh, I don't know. Uh, what? Don't I even have a lot of flock? What I even have to do? La 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 D. Oh, la la. Oh, we translate. D. Okay. Uh, hello, Mr. Ross. It's me again. Uh, Outro says. Don't want a lot of flock, please. Uh, your mother was a yucca plant. <clears throat> you can't say that. You might sue us. I don't care the flock. I don't care. <laughs> Great. He wants to see you outside. Huh. He wants to have a fight. <laughs> you watch your mouth, Cactus. I'm fed up with you bow mouthing me all over the BBC. This ends here and it ends there. Oh, day. Oh, day. There's a flung galloir. What did he say, Petrie? He said he likes your suit and your hair. He didn't say that. Come here. Wow. <laughs> This way. Oh, dear. Will Little Howard get in trouble for starting a fight between Jonathan Ross and Outshow the Cactus? Will Little Howard ever find the money? Is it possible to eat an entire paddling pool full of breakfast cereal uh, in one me. go? Stop talking, please. We can't afford you this week. But I've already done it. Oh, dear. That means to save money, I'll have to do the advert myself this week. <laughs> Do you need a spoon? Well, why not buy one from a spoon shop? I think that one's pretty good, isn't it? Isn't it? And now, back to this week's thrilling instalment of Little Howard's Big Question! Uh, any news on the budget? Where is this budgie that everyone keeps on going on about? Budget. Budget. Oh, sorry. Am I in your way? No, the money. Have you, have you heard anything about the money? I couldn't find the money. I looked everywhere. 
That's a shame. Have you, have you talked to everybody who works on the production? What, what about the editors? They're no use. They're a pop band, aren't they? No, the edit I think you should go and talk to the editors. And, and don't worry about me, honestly. I, I'm, I'm tickety boo, I really am. What a life for a killer death robot from space, eh? Just being a head on a shelf surrounded by tat. Oh. Well, perhaps you'll get your own series. Sarah Jane Smith spent 20 years in a cupboard, you know. Oh, I don't think so. I'll just have to get used to it. It's not so bad now, though. No, it isn't, is it? Oh, Simon! Oh, Mother, when we get out of this blessed props cupboard, do you think you and I might hire a gondola and hunt around Venus? Venus? Venice, Venice. Oh, Simon, yes! Simon, yes! Mother, would you make me the happiest killer-death robot from Spit? Look, I can't keep calling you Mother. What is your real name? Mother? What's wrong with Mother? Well, it's, uh, it's a bit, uh... Better than Simon. It's not. Oh, yeah? Simon? I mean, you're supposed to be the eighth most frightening monster in the universe, and you're called Simon? Yes, yes, I am. And we're not eighth. We're way scarier than the Slitheaton. I mean, since when have farts been scary? You should try living with Big Howard. Well, really, I mean, what are you trying to... Well, you shut up. You don't. Stick it up, you don't. So you put all the camera shots together then, after they've been filmed by the cameraman, who's told what to film by the director, who works in places that are found by the researchers and organised by the producer from scripts written by the writers. That's right. And I also put the finishing touches to the programme, like putting on your shadow. See here, you don't have a shadow. Oh. What I have to do is make a copy of you, like this. Right. Then I have to make you small. And turn you around and put you where your shadow should be, just like that. Oh, I see. And then I take out all the colours and then I make it all blurry. Oh. Like this. And there's your shadow. Oh. Why do you need to do that? Why don't I have my own shadow? Oh, well, um. You're not real. And stay out! But who's going to finish editing the show? Well, I'll do it. You can't do that, little Howard. It's too hard. It can't be that difficult. <laughs> We're on a tip. <laughs> Have you finished the big showbiz number for the end of this week's show? I think I've just finished it now. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> You're fried. Nanny, I'm afraid you're fired. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm making a right okay. pig's ear of this. Martin, I think you've got the lens cap on. I think he's in here. Hello? Oh, hello. Where is the editor? Um, she's in the loo. She's not in the loo, is she? She called me and told me that you'd fired her. Yeah, big snitch. You can't go firing editors. They're really important. Well, I need to fire someone. We have to get Big Howard back. This is Alison. She deals with all the money on the production. I want her to talk to you. Hello, little Howard. Hello, Alison. You're fried. No, Alison's got something very important to tell you about the budget. Oh. Well, little Howard, I look after the production budget and the office budget. And I've looked in its cage and I've found this. Mm. Oh, and the odds set, when you finish buffing that, can you start on the Ferrari? Hello, Roger T. Pigeon Variety Artist International. Oh, hello, little Howard. What? You found where the money's gone? Fantastic! And they're about to be arrested? Oh, that's marvellous. Oh, yeah, get off me. Excuse no, me, no handcuffs, please. I haven't even got any hands. <laughs> Honestly, little Howard, the, the money was just resting in my account. <laughs> he was a mean, mean pigeon. Yes, he was. What should we do now? Should we do a song and dance number about teamwork and uh, and what it's like to work behind the scenes on a TV production? Yeah, cos that'll be interesting. Well, what else have we learned today?
never trust a pigeon with your money or career. If you lend him anything, it's sure to disappear. Pigeons should be viewed with suspicion, dread and fear. Never trust a pigeon. Some of them are scrawny, some of them are fat. I'd only trust a pigeon on the inside of a cat. They are what you get if you stick feathers on a bat. Never trust a pigeon. Hello? No. Surely your pigeons can't be that bad. It's just a bad experience that you have had. I know I nicked some money, but let's not go mad. There's nothing wrong with pigeons. Pigeons are nasty, pigeons are sly. They are what you'll get if you stick feathers on a fly. You ask Nelson's column, he'll reply. Never trust a pigeon. Yes, hello? Oh, I say it again. We are just misunderstood. In a pigeon chest, we're good. Be used to pigeon or wood. You can trust a pigeon. Yes, that pigeon caused some consternation. But who are we to hand him our damnation? Maybe it's because his animation. Never trust cartoons. You can't say that, that's appalling There's so much that you're ignoring I'm not like him just because I'm a drawing There's nothing wrong with cartoons It's not fair, that's my point Don't get your beak all out of joint You can't judge people by what they look like We can't judge you by another cartoon tyke Yes, OK, I think I see. If I judge him, then he can judge me. But on one thing we can agree. He's a mean, mean pig. 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 Little ladies and gentlemen, we are very privileged to be able to introduce to you a brand new comedy double act. Give it up for Mother and Simon the Killer Death Robot from Spice! I say, 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 how many Killer Death Robots from outer space does it take to screw in a light bulb? Killer Death Robots from Space are the pinnacle of all life forms that can perform any household task without assistance. Yeah! Right, I shall eradicate you. Simon, don't you dare. Who but... threw that? Get ready for a brand new kind of adventure. Run! <laughs> The dancing dolphins of doom. Let me put it another way. <gasps> Bum cake. The legend of Dick and Dog. Can we watch now? So new it hurts. Ah! Friday at 4:35. CBBC on BBC One.